today. My name is Ed Tierney. I'm Chief of Staff of the School District of Palm Beach County. And we've called this news conference to update you and our community about the recent reports of MRSA that you've heard. We want to be clear. MRSA has not been detected on any of our campuses. People with reports of confirmed or suspected MRSA have visited our schools. Out of an abundance of caution, the school district is being proactive by taking swift and thorough action. The Department of Environmental and Cons Conservation Services is scrubbing and sanitizing the portions of the campuses that may be impacted. In a moment, you will hear from Ms. Wanda Paul, who is the district's chief operation officer, and she will address the protocol that the district follows in situations such as this. Dr. Alina Alonzo is the director of the Florida Department of Health in Palm Beach County. She will explain what MRSA is, how it is contracted, and what the symptoms look like. But first, I'd like to update the numbers. Over the past few days, the district has sanitized Suncoast High, Dwyer High, and Jupiter Elementary. Today, after learning that a person with suspected case was at John I. Leonard, portions of that campus will be sanitized, as will Roosevelt Elementary Schools. Though five schools have been or are being sanitized, the number of people with confirmed or suspected reports of MRSA is three. Now I'll ask Dr. Alonzo to pick it up from here. Good afternoon. Um, I'm here in support of the school district. Um, they have, we have been uh, talking um, closely and talking in terms of what to do. Again, uh, the reason the school is doing this is an abundance of caution. Um, some of these cases um, of MRSA are just suspected and therefore the school is taking extra caution in cleaning these areas. What is MRSA? The CDC has a great web page. You can go to cdc.gov slash MRSA. MRSA stands for Methicillin Resistant Staph Aureus. It's a common bacteria that is in the community. Therefore, it is not reported as a communicable disease to the Department of Health. The only reports of MRSA are those that are resistant to the normal treatment. We have had no such um, cases in Palm Beach County. So the MRSA that we're talking about might be someone who thought or, or may think that they have MRSA. They have gone to the doctor. The only way to confirm that you have MRSA is by doing a laboratory test of the wound area. It has to have a swab. It gets tested, sent to the lab, and the lab will tell you if you have confirmed uh, case of MRSA. That bacteria has to be growing in that wound. The way it's transmitted from person to person is if a person with a wound that is oozing, and yes, it's disgusting, but it could be pus or liquid material coming out of the wound, gets in contact with your skin, and then your skin has an opening. That MRSA then has to get into the opening or the cut on your skin. I could have MRSA right now on my hands. That does not mean that I have MRSA. Okay, so I want to make that very clear to folks, that having MRSA on your body does not mean that you have infection of MRSA. In order for that to happen, I have to have a cut, and then the MRSA has to get into that cut or that wound in my skin. So therefore, when a person has MRSA, or the doctor confirms that they have MRSA, what they're told is to wash their hands frequently, cover the wound with gauze or a Band-Aid, and keep it covered. That person can return to work, can return to school, and we don't exclude those people from working or from going to school because it is not contagious as long as it's covered. So what is the concern? Why, why is the school doing this? Again, the school is doing this because they're concerned for your children and they want to make sure that they take every precaution possible to prevent any possible spread of it. So they're doing it in abundance of caution. Um, the other important thing to note about MRSA is how do you know what should you do if you think you have MRSA? If you get a wound, let's say you get a mosquito bite and you have a tiny little red spot and all of a sudden that little red spot starts getting bigger it starts getting red, swollen, it starts oozing, it starts to hurt, and you get a fever, 
by that time you should be to the doctor. I'd probably go to the doctor three steps before that, especially when it starts hurting. That's a sign that it's MRSA and not just a usual cut infected with the regular bacteria that are in the community. So at that time, the doctor would see you, would do, like I said, a swab of that lesion that's oozing and that's red, send it to the laboratory, and the laboratory would tell you whether or not it's MRSA. If it is MRSA, it is easily treated with antibiotics, and you will get better in a few weeks. During that time, the doctor will tell you to keep that wound covered and to use very good hygiene. Now, what should you do as a mom? What I always tell my kids is if they're in the gym, if they're at school, if they're playing football, if they're wrestling, any sports, not, first of all, the same thing my grandmother used to tell me, wash your hands all the time, wash your hands. That's the biggest deterrent for any communicable disease. Number two, do not share personal hygiene products. Don't share a towel, don't share a razor, don't share other things that other people are using. Footballs, uh, football games, for example. Sometimes you get the shoulder pads or the helmet, and the kids share them. I always told my kids, take your own equipment, don't share equipment. And that's not just good for MRSA, that's good for any of the other bugs that are out there, lice, anything else that you can think of. And again, washing your hands, very important. Because why? Because you might have that MRSA on you, and it then would spread to an open wound. If you don't have an open wound, you can touch MRSA all you want. You're not going to get sick. Okay? So that's pretty much in a nutshell. I'm going to let Wanda Paul uh, continue, and then you can ask questions. Good afternoon. As previously stated, my name is Wanda Paul. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the District. We clean our schools every night. We sanitize our schools every night. We follow the CDC and the Florida Depart Department of Health guidelines uh, when we have uh, a situation such as this. So it is not unusual for us to go through these efforts. Uh, so the thing that I want to say also is that we have experienced people that have been with the district for many, many years. We have contractors that we utilize to help us do it efficiently and effectively. So uh, again, you know, this is something that we know how to do and we know how to do well. So that is basically what I, what I have to say. Uh, I think we will continue to monitor the situation and make sure that we're vigilant uh, in this. Again, this is done, you know, what we're doing, our actions right now is out of abundance of caution. So I thank y'all and I'll turn it back over to our Chief of Staff, Ed Tierney. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm gonna repeat one more time and I hope that you will help us convey that MRSA has not been detected on any of our campuses, people with reports of confirmed or suspected MRSA have visited our schools. And with that, we have time for a couple questions if there are any. We're not, the question was, were any of them children? We're not giving out any identifying information about the individuals. Correct. Sure. Paul Strauss, I'm the director of the district's Environmental and Conservation Services Department. Uh, we follow the CDC and the FDOH guidelines for sanitization. Uh, we use a number of different sanitizing agents. What we're using right now is 10% bleach solution. It's very important when using those sanitizers to remove all the dirt and film that might be on hard surfaces or touch surfaces first so that the disinfectant is really effective um, and that we do it thoroughly. We identify where the individuals were on campus and then we put extra resources into addressing those specific areas. No, all, for all sites involved, only those areas that were identified as possibly, potentially, having any infectious agents were sanitized. It's, it's a very intensive process where we work with our internal health specialists and our facilities folks 
And we put together a game plan. It involves a lot of working pieces. We've got a lot of experience over the last five years, particularly in dealing with infectious agents, so we have a very robust sanitizing program. Three individuals, five schools. Correct. Uh, I don't have the breakdown of who of who visited where. Correct. Today. They will be before tomorrow morning. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much.